Hello, in this video we are looking at 6x9 folding cameras and 6x9 photography. Hello and welcome, Matt from MrLiker.com. This is a short video to follow up on the Voigtlander Perco 6x6 camera video that I did where people were mentioning there are lots of different folding cameras available. So today I'm going to concentrate on 6x9 folding cameras and talk a little bit about 6x9 photography. I have three 6x9 folding film cameras to show you and we can look at some of the common features. So I guess first off, the topic of 6x9 folding cameras is absolutely huge. 6x9 film cameras were popular from the maybe 1930s to the 1950s. And so during that time, there was a huge amount of cameras made from many different manufacturers, all with varying degrees of kind of complexity and pros and cons. I guess the beauty of 6x9 film cameras is it can be extremely affordable. If you look on eBay, prices can be as ridiculous as something like, there's like 15 pounds. But personally, I try to spend between perhaps 50 to 150 pounds. You can pay less for less popular models and worse condition cameras or untested cameras. And then you'll pay more, anything up to 500 pounds or more than 500 pounds if you want the kind of best of the best, film tested, most desirable models. Buying vintage cameras on eBay can be a little bit like Russian roulette because unlike buying vintage lenses, there are many more things that can go wrong with a camera versus a piece of glass and metal. For that reason, I try to buy cameras where it says they are film tested or the description says this is working, this is working, etc, etc and from eBay sellers with a good feedback and good reputation. Because yes, you can probably pay £20 for a camera, but unless you're just going to use it as a prop in your studio or in your YouTube background, something like this on your shelf. But if you actually want to buy the camera to use it, like I do, you need to be a bit more careful. Uh, why am I saying this? I guess talking from experience. I do buy a lot on eBay and maybe I should do a separate video on top tips for buying vintage cameras on eBay and vintage lenses because it's very easy to get caught out. I'll show you my first 6x9 camera in a second, but I then decided I wanted a, another 6x9 camera. So I bought myself an Agfa Record Billy 2. And this is a beautiful camera, it's a really small size. It's very compact for a 6x9. I'll show you this camera in more detail in a second. This is a beautiful camera, but it doesn't function as intended. Despite the seller saying it, everything was great. Yes, it looks beautiful, but the focusing isn't working. So for that reason, this, so this is my second 6x9 camera. With the Billy record not working, I then decided to, I then thought that'd be a nice excuse to buy a third 6x9 film camera. So this camera I bought very recently. I've not yet tested it, but this is a Voigtlander Better 1. And Voigtlander Bessers are highly regarded as some of the better 6x9 film cameras. To open the camera, you press this button here. And, and to look at the lens, you push here on the top and on the bottom. So this is locked. When they are locked, that means the lens should now focus correctly. The Voigtlander Besser 1 has a built-in viewfinder, but no rangefinder. So for that reason, I use my hot shoe range finders, which you probably saw in the Voigtlander Perkyo video. Um, I'll put a link to them again in the description below, but it's basically a clip-on hot shoe range finder allowing you to focus. If you don't have a hot shoe range finder, you can just use hyperfocal distancing or scale focus, kind of guess your distance. So depending which 6x9 camera you get, some cameras have a built-in range finder and viewfinder. Some models will only have a viewfinder and some models won't even have the kind of built-in viewfinder. They'll have like a vintage equivalent. So on the Agfa Billy, here is the viewfinder. Can you see? So it's like a pop-up viewfinder. And then to fold it, it goes like so. This really helps with keeping the camera super small, which I love. And just to show you to open this camera, again, press the button. And there is the Agfa Billy 2. I'll probably get this camera repaired because it is a really nice camera. You can see the, the name badge there. Also, this particular model has the Solinar lens, which is regarded as one of the best lenses for these for this particular camera. So, again, I, I need to get it fixed. To fold up these cameras, you, on most models you press here, and 
like so. Great design for a size comparison. Here is my smallest 6x9 camera. And here is the Leica M3. So, so the size is very comparable to a Leica M camera, which is one reason that attracted these cameras to me. 6x9 film is huge, and to see how big it is compared to 35mm, to open the back of the camera, on this particular model you press top and bottom, and the back will open like so. And how big is the 6x9 negative? It's that big. They are massive. <laughs> so obviously if you hadn't guessed, these cameras take 120 medium format film and you will get eight frames per roll of film. One of the great features on some 6x9 cameras is they come with either a 645 film mask or a 6x6 film mask, depending on the camera model. So the better one comes with a 645 film mask, and if you can see that against me. And all you do is you clip in the 645 film mask, close the back up, and then on the top of the Voigtlander Besser one, you can select either 6x9 or 645 format, and that changes the view through the viewfinder, so you can compose for either 6x9 or 645. The advantage of shooting 645 is you'll get 16 photos per roll, so double. So, so I guess if you want to use your 6x9 camera in economy mode, Make sure you get one with a 645 mask and then you'll get twice as many shots for the same roll of film. To close the Besser, you press this red button and I'm doing the same on the opposite side and it folds away nicely like so. One of the beautiful things about these old cameras is many come with the original case. So here is the Voigtlander Besser 1 case. So you screw the camera into the base of the lens case like so and then the camera is designed to obviously walk around around your neck, you, you see the photo you want to take, you pop the back and they're designed to be used in their case. So open the lens, lock out the lens, flip and then this is how you'd have the camera around your neck, like so. And then when you finish, press the red button, fold it away and a beautiful classy travel camera bag. The camera bags are even designed with the red window showing so that you can advance your film without taking the camera out of the case, which is a brilliant idea and a, I guess a well thought out design at the time of these cameras were released. So that is my latest edition, the Voigtlander Besser 1. When I've had time to take some photos, I'll put them on social media, but it's a beautiful looking camera and seems in very good condition. So that is my latest 6x9 camera, which was my first 6x9 camera. My first 6x9 film camera was the Moss KVA5. Now this is a Soviet camera. It's a little bit deeper than say the design of the Agfa. The Agfa is much slimmer and also less tall. Unlike the Bessar one, which we just looked at in the leather case, that offers me 6x9 and 6x5. So the beauty of the Moss KVA5 is it offers me 6x9 and 6x6 square format. And as with the Voigtlander Besser one, you just have to change the dial and then it changes the view in the viewfinder. Now this camera is actually more advanced than both the Agfa Billy one and the Voigtlander Besser one. So this camera has both a built-in viewfinder and a built-in rangefinder. The rangefinder design is like so. So the way it works is this small window is your viewfinder and this window is your rangefinder. And then what happens is you're looking through this window, through this window, and then it gives you the correct focus. So you can probably see it from above. Now this camera I've used the most of all of the three cameras, so I'll be able to share some examples with you. Having a built-in range finder makes it much more convenient for use, but it makes the design slightly larger. The design of most of the 6x9 cameras is pretty much all the controls on the front of the lens itself, and then you'll just have your bellows section, and then the film in the back. So you have aperture, shutter speed, and focusing all on the front of the lens itself. At the start I mentioned the prices vary a lot 
between the different models. Many of the cameras will be released in multiple variations. So the prices vary between the different 6x9 camera models, often because of the features that camera will offer. Some cameras will have more advanced shutters and some cameras will have more advanced lenses. So if I take Voigtlander for example, on the low end of the scale you can have the Voigtlander Vascar lens, which I guess is kind of your budget lens or the cheapest option. Then you have the Voigtlander Color Scope R, which is kind of the next step up from the Vascar. Uh, I mentioned both of these lenses in the Voigtlander Pokio video. And then if you want better than a Voigtlander Color Scope R, you would get a Voigtlander Heliar lens. So those are three examples of price bands depending on the lens built into the front of the camera. There might be small differences on the rest of the camera, but the main thing you're paying for is the lens and in some instances the improved lens and improved shutter. So that's why there's so many price variants. So if you look on eBay and, it, and one camera looks crazy expensive and then one camera looks really cheap, have a look at the, the, the details. Some cameras have the say 645 or 6x6 film mask missing, which is a common issue. I don't have the 6x6 film mask for the Moss KVA5. So that is why the prices vary so much. In terms of lenses, most 6x9 cameras have a 105mm, often f4.5 lens. And in 35mm terms, that equates to around 45 to 50mm. So it gives you kind of a normal view. So although 105 sounds like a telephoto lens, because the film is such a large film format, being 6x9, it actually equates to around 50 mil. So bear that in mind when you see that the lens is 105 mil. It's not a telephoto lens, it's just a standard lens. So if you love the idea of six by nine film format, but you don't want to get a vintage folding film camera, there are at least two other common options. One option is to use a six by nine roll film back on your four by five large format camera. Uh, I do this personally. I use six by seven film backs, six by nine, 6x12 and obviously 4x5. If you want to see some of my 4x5 stuff, drop me a message in the comments and I'll bring that video forward. Here are some example photos shot on a 6x9 roll film back on 4x5 film cameras. And then another option you have is you could get a more modern 6x9 camera. Now Fujifilm or Fujika made the GW690 camera and there's various versions, the 1, 2, 3. Uh, this is also known as the Texas Leica because it's basically like a Leica M rangefinder camera on steroids. The Fuji 6x9 camera is a basically beefed up Leica in terms of it is a 6x9 rangefinder camera. So if you love the Leica M experience of using the rangefinder, and you'd love 6x9 film format and the massive negatives, something like the Texas Leica would be like an ideal choice. Uh, personally, I don't shoot a lot of 6x9, so I've never really been tempted by the, the size of the, the Texas Leica, as they call it, or the Fuji GW690. But that is a popular camera for people that love shooting 6x9, so I just wanted to include that as well. So that's my quick summary of 6x9 cameras and in particular 6x9 folding vintage cameras. They do offer exceptionally good value for money, but I'd highly recommend you buy cameras which say film tested because some of these cameras can be 80, 90 years old. So there's a good chance they may not work unless they've been recently kind of CLA'd or serviced by whoever's selling the camera. If you want a better chance of having a working 6x9 camera, try to get one that's been tested. I hope you found this video useful. Please drop me your thoughts in the comments. And before you go, one feature I'd like to start including in my videos is looking at other photographers in the same kind of niche. Film photography is a small niche as it is like a photography. So I think it'd be quite nice to kind of give shout outs to fellow shooters. Many of the channels I'll feature will need no introduction and it's more of like a hats off to them for great work and, and probably thanks for inspiring me in the past. But I'd also like to share channels of a similar size to mine. So for today's featured channel, if you enjoyed this kind of six by nine content, I'd highly recommend you check out Eric at the Film Photography channel. He reached out to me on Instagram and we realised that we cover a lot of the same topics. So do check out his channel. He's got a really great Leica M3 video as well and covers a lot of the cameras that I use. From talking to Eric on Instagram, he sounds like a great guy, so I'm sure you'll love his videos. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and back soon with more videos.